In this video, we're gonna be going through some of the best suspension upgrades you can make to your BMW F90 M5. Today we've got a BMW F90 M5 in the workshop with us. This is the big brother to the BMW M3 and it's a lot faster in a straight line with a twin turbo V8 pushing out over 600 brake horsepower on the M5 competition, which this car is. As usual, we're gonna be looking to make some handling upgrades to the chassis today, but we're gonna be focusing on fast road handling upgrades as opposed to track upgrades because this car is very much a fast road car due to its size and its weight. They're rarely seen out on track. The upgrades will enhance the car on track too, but we're really gonna focus on making this car much better in terms of its fast road handling capabilities without taking away from its road usability. Starting at the front of the M5, we have two suspension upgrades we're going to be installing. The first of which addresses something that is very common. And if you're a regular viewer to the channel, you're probably gonna know what I'm gonna say, but we're gonna add more negative camber to the front axle. So camber is where the top of the wheel is leaned in compared to the bottom, and that is negative camber. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. So a lack of camber causes understeer due to not having the tire contact patch to lean onto into the corner. So you can actually roll off the tire and it causes understeer as you fall off that grip. This is done on purpose by BMW and it's, it's apparent in a lot of different manufacturers and all different cars. And that's because these cars have to apply to a much wider audience, a worldwide audience of any driving level. And understeer is the best limit to achieve for an inexperienced driver. So as you just lift off and let the front recover and get back on track. For an experienced driver, it can be extremely frustrating when you're trying to push the car on a little bit and get more out of that chassis, but the front just keeps pushing and there's not many ways around that unless we address it directly. So we're gonna be increasing camber to give more tire contact patch to lead onto because with a bigger and heavier car, understeer is even more apparent as all that mass is just pushing through the tire. And this is a very big and very heavy car. So we need to get more negative camber on that front axle where we can to increase the front grip and reduce that understeer. Usually on a BMW chassis, we'd install a camber plate or a top mount on top of the strut and that would allow us to lean the strut in and give us additional negative camber. However, on the F90 M5, the suspension system is actually quite a lot different. It's more like a double wishbone setup with an upper wishbone and two lower control arms tying the hub together. This means that we can't fit a top mount because it won't affect the camber at all. The camber is actually affected by the two lower control arms or the upper wishbone. This is the design we see often on things like supercars, like the McLarens and the Ferraris, they're double wishbone systems. And they're designed that way because they're quite a nice way to package roll, roll sensors and camber gain. And they're a nice way to fine tune that in the design stages, but it can be an issue when it comes to adjustability after the car has been made. So normally with a double wishbone setup, we would insert shims like on the McLarens and Ferraris between the chassis and the lower control arm. And this would push the lower control arm out more and give more negative camber from the bottom, allowing us to get that additional camber into the chassis. But this technique isn't possible with the M5 because the through bolts on the suspension arms wouldn't allow for any shims to go anywhere, so it wouldn't change anything. So what we've done instead is we've designed an off-center camber bush. So we've moved the bearing hole off-center from the central position of the bush, and all you need to do is press out the original rubber bush from the control arm, insert this bush in its off-center position. So we're actually adding more length technically to the arm between bolt centers, and this provides even more camber at the wheel. So we'll get to those values when we start setting this car up once we've got these bushes fitted, and we can show you that. So we're gonna add additional negative camber by way of our off-center camber bush. This bush is also solid. So keeping in mind, this is a road car. The bearings don't increase the MVH much at all for the performance gain that they offer, but it does remove the flex through the corner. So usually through the corner with a car this heavy, especially the bushes are put under a lot of tension and they're allowed to flex. And this causes geometry changes through the corner, giving slight vagueness and inconsistency at various cornering speeds. With a solid bush, the setting we're gonna to set today is gonna to be locked into that chassis and it cannot move, giving much more stability and confidence back into the chassis, knowing that those settings aren't gonna be moving around when you're pushing hard. The next upgrade at the front is to help with braking stability. So as standard in the front lower control arm, there's a big rubber bush present in the arm. 
under really heavy braking, this flexes quite a lot, especially on a big, heavy, powerful car like the M5. And it can lead to instability under really heavy braking. And it just lets the car move around a little bit and leads to quite a snaking sensation when you're going into heavy braking. So we're gonna be installing our front solid control arm bush into that arm. And that removes all of that unwanted moving around and gives the car much more stability under heavy braking. We simply press out the OEM rubber bush, which allows for all of that movement and we press in our front solid control arm bush. And this immediately stops all of that movement from occurring and gives much more stability and confidence back into the chassis. Often when replacing rubber with solid bushes, NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness, is something that is considered an issue. However, with our bushes and bearings that we use, we have tested these upgrades extensively, and there is an extremely minimal increase in NVH for these two products, but they offer a very big performance increase for the MVH increase, which is minimal. So it's well, well worth the upgrade to get all that confidence and grip out of the chassis. It's well worth upgrading to these parts to achieve that. With the upgrades fitted to the front and the main issues resolved, we're now gonna to move to the rear axle to focus on one thing that the M5 does struggle with at the back, which is traction. For that, we're gonna be installing a set of rear adjustable tow arms. This has a few effects on the rear axle, which really helps to increase grip and stability, making for a much better, more consistent drive out on the roads. The first reason is that the adjustable rear tow arms come with solid road joints at each end, replacing the rubber bushes in the standard tow arm. These bushes, particularly with the mass of the vehicle through the corner, flex during cornering and apply a tow and camber change due to that flex in the bush. With the adjustable tow arms fitted, this flex is completely removed and the setting that we set in terms of tow will remain set through different speeds of corner, giving a lot more consistency in the chassis. They also mean that we're no longer limited at the back axle in terms of camber and tow adjustment because the stock adjuster is very limited in terms of its range. So with the adjustable tow arm fitted, we can get optimum camber and tow settings at the rear axle to really get the tires dug into the tarmac and give a lot more traction when we're setting off and when we're just on full throttle on corner exit. It helps us tie the whole chassis together. And so with the increased grip from the front, now we've reduced the understeer, we can add that grip to the back to really raise the whole level of the car and make sure there's more grip all round for a much faster, more consistent and engaging drive. The parts have now all been installed to the M5 and the car's been fully set up with a fast road geometry alignment. With the camber bushes fitted up front, we've managed to gain an additional 0.9 degrees of camber, which is now really nice for fast road driving to get on the B roads, carry that speed and reduce that understeer massively. With the rear tow arms fitted, we've been able to dial in that geometry and we know now that when this car's pushing hard, those settings are not gonna move and it's gonna feel absolutely planted in the road with much more stability and much more traction. If you wanna see what parts we do for your car, then head over to the website where we've got loads of articles on recommended upgrades and tuning tips, as well as the shop which lists all the products we currently make. And we'll see you next time.